Welcome in everybody to another edition of Argo Sports Insider. I'm your host, Will Kennedy, and on the program every episode, we like to spend some time shining the light on the University of West Florida athletic program and our fantastic student athletes. We've got a ton to get to in this episode. Baseball and softball are underway as our spring sports are firing up. We'll talk about men's and women's tennis, men's and women's golf as well, dodging some raindrops, getting some tournaments in, and the swimming and diving team gets ready for their conference championships. Plus, basketball is in the final stretches, making that push for Gulf South Conference tournament positioning. We start this week with baseball. The UWF baseball team under head coach Mike Jeffcoat got the season underway, taking a sweep from West Alabama at home to get things started. Had to dance some raindrops a little bit, had a game against Spring Hill, moved around two games in fact, and had a series with Shorter at home in which they lost two of the three games uh, with a tough outing on Sunday after moving some games around. We did have an opportunity to catch up with Coach Jeffcoat to talk about the early season start for his Argos program. Well, Coach, you guys are coming off a weekend series with Shorter coming in after opening the season with a sweep of West Alabama. Kind of assess where you are. It's very early, but six games into the season. Yeah, I mean, obviously we're disappointed losing two out of three at home, but Shorter, you got to tip their cap. They have uh, a good pitching staff. They did a really good job. Hung in there with us in that uh, second game on Sunday uh, when we were up 2 nothing, and, you know, we were able to get the victory and, you know, one of those deals. But, yeah, it's early, really early. Your pitching was, you know, one of the areas that you had some concerns coming in, just really based on experience as, as starters. How is that kind of playing out early, and, and what adjustments do you make? Yeah, well, overall, I've been really pleased with the pitching. Uh, you know, thought it was a little bit of a question mark, again, with guys with little experience or guys that hadn't pitched in a while. And um, I, I think they've stepped up. And our starting pitching, Evan Floyd, Ryan Brewer, uh, have given us great starts. Tyler Dowdy, the true freshman, had a good first start, had a little bit of a struggle here this past weekend. And, um, you know, all he's got to do is get back to throwing command of his fastball, and uh, he'll be where he needs to be because we've got a good defense. But, you know, our bullpen has done a pretty good job. Uh, you know, we gave up the highest run total in the last game with eight. Uh, but some of those were extra opportunities where we had some defensive miscues that don't show up in the stat book on errors, but we dropped a couple of pop-ups in foul territory that led to the next pitch being a big hit and driving in a few. So little things right there, if we could clean up, could be a whole different outcome. I think we're getting an early taste of how competitive this conference in the Gulf South is going to be. And I mean, every series, every weekend, you're going to expect the best. Yeah, no doubt. And Shorter had just come off taking two of three from Delta at home. Uh, and then they come on the road and they've proven, hey, they're going to be a team that's going to be a, a contender. And, um, you know, there is balance throughout the league. And you don't know in this league. And you got to come to play. And obviously, weather now has come into play. Uh, everybody's been really good on the COVID, and we've all been testing negative, and we hope that keeps happening. But now we're dealing with the weather and moving series every weekend, and the big gap of not being able to play midweek games is tough in the game of baseball on the arms, on the timing for hitters and pitchers. And, you know, everybody's dealing with it, but it is different, and you are trying to feel it out this early in conference play. So uh, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge. And you may be going on the road, maybe not. It just kind of depends early on. You've had uh, your first six games at home. Would have been a few more with Spring Hill if we could have played. But uh, what do you expect coming up? Yeah, I mean, we're supposed to go to Delta. we have already looking at probably moving that series to a Sunday-Monday because of the snow and ice and them trying to dry the field out. with the temperature still, I don't think, is going to get over 30, 35 degrees. So we're looking at them possibly coming here, and then we would maybe go there instead for two years. But... Uh, you know, the, again, the great thing about these coaches in this league, we're all on the same page. It's all about the kids. We want to win. Uh, we want to play games, not win games. Uh, winning comes secondary. We're all competitive. We want to do that, but we want to get the games in for the kids. So whatever it takes. Co Coach, good luck wherever the games are played next. Thanks. Appreciate it. Of course, GoArgos.com and our Argo Armada app are always the spots to keep up with the latest on scheduling your social media outlets, and plus all the latest news for the University of West Florida Athletic Department. It is important right now because, as Coach Jeff Coat mentioned, we're not quite sure when and where that Delta Baseball Series may take place. Coming up next on the program, we'll talk with Coach Ashley McLean as we get into softball and the Argos start to their season on Argo Sports Insider. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people with a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits.
The Florida Lottery is proud to support education by contributing billions of dollars to Florida schools and awarding countless Bright Future scholarships so Florida students can do more than just dream of a brighter future. They can create one. Learn more at flalottery.com. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at penair.org slash about us. This portion of Argo Sports Insider is brought to you by Penn Air Federal Credit Union. Jenny King, Hill Kelly Dodge, High Point Hotel Group, and the Florida Lottery. Welcome back into Argo Sports Insider. The UWF softball team got off to a great start to their season. They had Lubbock Christian in down at the fort, not too far from where we are here in the field house. Then they went on the road had to travel up to North Georgia to take on the number two team in the country as part of a, a double header kind of weekend where they played two games on each day. It was a tough road trip for Coach Ashley McLean and company. We did have a chance to catch up with Coach and talk about what happened up in the Peach State. Well, Coach, you get a chance to come back home after hitting the road uh, with some games up in Georgia and some really tough competition. I know that was, you, you want to test yourself early in the season. We do. Um, North Georgia is a great uh, program up there and, you know, we didn't get the turnout we wanted, but we learned a lot and we grew a lot as a team. And um, I know if we face them again this year that it will be a different outcome, but we just learned a lot about each other, about who can play where, you know, and went through a lot of obstacles. So it was good to see. I know a lot of times, you know, nobody wants to lose, but sometimes you can learn uh, and you just kind of touched on it a whole heck of a lot from, from losses, sometimes more than from wins. Mm -hmm. You definitely can learn a lot more from losses than wins. When you win, everyone's happy. Everyone thinks everything's going great, um, even when you kind of do mess up. So when you lose, you know, you kind of take, take a step back and everyone reflects on each other. And um, I know as a coaching staff, we reflected back and, okay, what do we need to do to get these kids ready for our next competition? Who was swinging the bat well over the weekend? Allie Merrill had a great weekend. Um, Kara did really well, but Allie had a really good weekend. She swung the bat really well. You know, our freshman Madeline Webb came in to pinch hit a couple times, and she did really well. Um, a lot of our girls hit the ball well. It just was right two kids. So, you know, we're going up. We're moving up the mountain in the good places, and, you know, we're about to get some more practice in before Westell comes in. You guys went out and played Hillsdale on the second day of, of your trip up to Georgia. Lose the first one, but then you get a fantastic performance from Kelsey Sweat. She throws a no-hitter. Uh, that is always special whenever it happens. It is. I mean, that was an amazing game for her, you know, and that's how the first game should have came out. And it, it was like we came out and we were pumped and we were ready. And it's just trying to find each other and find the mesh of the team. And so that's what we're kind of working through right now and seeing what role everyone has. And um, But Kelsey Sweat did a wonderful job. Our defense did a great job behind her. And then the bats, you know, everyone stood, got up to the plate and had a lot of confidence. What do you expect from West Al coming in? They're going to be aggressive. You know, everyone through the GSC conference, but they've been pulling games that they usually don't in the past. And so they have a very strong lineup, um, just like we face against North Georgia and Hillsdale. But, you know, as long as we take care of ourselves and our business, we'll be just fine. Well, let's, let's talk first just about the no hitter. I mean, you've been involved in, in one before as a part of a group. Uh, when was the last time? Have you ever thrown one before? Um, I threw a combined one last year with, I think it was our whole pitching staff. That was pretty cool. But not in high school? Oh, I threw a few in high school, but that doesn't mean much. It's when college, it means a lot more. Kind of walk us through the, the game. I mean, you, you, you know, at what point do you realize this is really happening today? Well, around the third inning, I kind of looked up at the scoreboard and I was like, wow, I haven't let up any hits yet. But it's way too soon to talk about a no-hitter at that point. And then every pitcher knows to throw a no-hitter, you have to have like at least one or two crazy plays from the defense. and. I think it was the fifth inning, Tila Howard made like a crazy backhand down the line. And at that point I was kind of like, okay, two more innings, I can do this. And then it just kind of fell into place. You guys have West Al coming in here. I mean, you, you, you obviously coach was mentioned to take some lessons away from the trip up to Georgia. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys need to do to, to get the sweep this weekend? Um, I think, you know, coming off this past weekend, we had a couple like tough luck losses. I don't think we did anything specific 
like bad to lose. I think it just wasn't falling our way. I think we learned a lot about each other and like the type of teammates we need to be for each other. So I think keeping that mentality going into this weekend of being a good teammate, picking everybody up, staying hype, like having a lot of energy will really help. And congratulations to Kelsey Sweat. She is the Gulf South Conference Pitcher of the Week coming off that no hitter up in Georgia. The softball team is back at home coming up this weekend. They'll host West Alabama and look to get back to their winning ways with some home cooking. Coming up next here on the program, it's time to step inside the arena here, get out on the court and talk men's basketball as the Argos try to hang on for playoff positioning in the Gulf South Conference East Division. who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Welcome back to Argo Sports Insider. We are here inside the field house at the University of West Florida, where we like to display some of our national championship trophies. We've got 10 of them plus more than 100 conference championships. Both basketball programs are still in the mix, fighting for potential playoff positioning in the Gulf South Conference East Division. We'll start with the men in this segment. The men have been out on the road and then back at home a little bit. They lose two at West Georgia, then come home and get a split with Montevallo. It was really a series that they needed to win both games. They got a solid 10 point win in the Friday night game, had a lead at halftime on Saturday, and then lost that lead in the second half and wound up losing to the Falcons by five. We had a chance to sit down with Coach Jeff Perkhammer to talk about what's next for his Argo team. Well, Coach, you split over the weekend, and it was I know, a situation where you felt like you had to get both games. Kind of where do you stand now as far as the rest of the season and having a shot to make the tournament? Well, we need to finish good. We we'll probably need a little bit of help now, but we still uh, have a chance. We've got uh, some games left that we feel like we can win, and we just need to play well. It was just a little disappointing on Saturday. Thought we were in good position going into the second half, and then just didn't make shots, and that's going to be a thing with our team. If we're making shots, uh, we're pretty good, and uh, the second half of that game, we just didn't make shots. You guys are in this weird pattern where you're not playing that, that midweek game or that Tuesday game, and I know that can, can be a little strange. It gives you some practice time that you maybe wouldn't have, but you miss some of that game time. It is kind of weird. You know, you're used to playing you know, Wednesday or Thursday and then playing again Saturday, and uh, now we're giving guys Sunday and Monday off, you know, get later in the season, you give them two days off, and then we come back and do a lot of shooting and execution on, on uh, Tuesday. And then you got Wednesday, Thursday to kind of prepare for Friday, Saturday weekend. And those Friday, Saturday back-to-backs are, are a little bit tough to do. And that's really the case for a lot of your guys, right? I mean, they, they <laughs> all can do a lot of different things. Dan Sofield, you know, Tariq, McElfin, these are all guys that they, defensively they can block a shot. They can come up with a steal. Cam Cox, but it's just night in and night out being consistent in all those areas. The consistency has been an issue all year, uh, not just with our team. If you look across the country with different teams, players, uh, if you can find a team that's played consistently and their, their guys have given, given consistent efforts every night, uh, they've been about what you thought they were going to be every night, they've probably had a really good year. And that's where we're still working at, still trying to become a little bit more consistent in our play. Throw in a Wendell Matthews who had some great you know, stretches over the weekend against Montevallo and did a lot of things as we were mentioning you know, on both ends of the court. I mean, that, that gives you kind of a window into what it could be to have some of these bigs who can stretch the floor and do these things. Well, and you get these guys back next year with waivers so that, you know, with Wendell, you, you got a guy that's aggressive and active and has gotten better as the year has gone, kind of figured out what we're doing. And uh, I think he feels much more comfortable. So 
Uh, we like how he's playing. We think he'll continue to get better. Let's talk about Auburn Montgomery and you know hitting the road and going up there. Tough team and a tough place to play. We have not played real well up there, so that'll be a, a challenge going into the play. Uh, they're like everybody else. They're a team that can beat anybody on a given night, and they're a team that can lose to anybody on a given night. They've been up and down a little bit. Uh, they've had a couple pauses uh, with, uh, with COVID. Um, so they're, they're a team that plays Tuesday night. Uh, they play Montevello and then uh, come back and play us uh, with less, I guess, prep time over the weekend. So uh, hopefully we can go there and be excited about playing and, and put together two really good games. And just kind of putting the foot down and trying to finish strong here at the end of the season and whatever happens, happens. Yep, just kind of find out from there. But we got, you know, AUM on Friday, Saturday, and we go to Montevello on Tuesday. And all those games are games that we know we can compete and play in. Coach, good luck to you. Okay, thanks. No midweek game again for Coach Jeff Burkhammer and company this week. They will be on the road at Auburn Montgomery next, needing to win both of those games to have any hope really to stay alive in the Gulf South Conference playoff race. Coming up next here on the program, we'll talk with Coach Stephanie Lawrence Yelton as her team closes in on a potential berth in the GSC tournament. That's next on Argo Sports Insider. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. This portion of Argo Sports Insider is brought to you by Coca-Cola, Baptist Healthcare and the Andrews Institute, Publix, Whataburger, and CPC Office Technologies. Welcome back to Argo Sports Insider. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster ride for both basketball teams, both the men and women here at the University of West Florida this season. A strange season, all conference games, 20 game schedule, games being moved around, and here we are on the home stretch trying to squeeze in a bunch of games before the end of February. The women were on the road at West Georgia on a Tuesday night with an opportunity to potentially clinch a playoff spot in the GSC East. We had a chance to catch up with Coach Stephanie Lawrence Yelton after that West Georgia contest to talk about where her team stands. Well, Coach, congratulations. You guys are officially in the Gulf South Conference Tournament. What a roller coaster ride it's been, but you do it in style, get a big win to secure that berth. Oh, man, what an amazing win, especially on the road against a team that we played really tough here on our home floor uh, and who really owed us one uh, getting on their home floor. But uh, it was it was amazing, amazing effort by uh, our group of young women. I think really things are starting to, you know, turn for us. We thought we would play our best basketball late January and into February, and I think that's coming true. How far has this team come? And you kind of touched on it right there, you know, from back in December and you know, kind of sputtering yeah. start and stop, not just because of scheduling, but the way they were playing. Yeah, well, you know, we look back to even back into September, you know, September, October, and November were really non-existent for us. I mean, we had a few days sprinkled in where we really could get some workouts in, but we didn't have a consistent enough work base to really start our games when they started in mid-December. Uh, and we knew at that point, mid-December, that mm, we've got some work to do uh, just from the stoppage that we've had, just from the hurricane experience, just from a lot of things that went on in the fall. But I think we're reaping the benefits of having the team together, 
um, together in a more consistent basis, being able to practice every day, and we're reaping the benefits of that. You get four quarters in the win over West Georgia there, but it's not necessarily something that you've had night in and night out, but it, does that just show if you can get that complete game effort, what this team's capable of? Oh yeah, the nights that we've gotten the complete game effort, we've come out with huge wins. You know, we, we beat Lee when they were number 18 in the country here on our home floor when we put four quarters together. And the very uh, previous night, we put three quarters together and couldn't beat them, you know? And so I think when our team really pulls together and we can play four good, solid quarters of basketball, we're pretty good. You're starting to see certain players, you know, kind of fall into their role, but and others kind of step up and increase their role. Peyton Lewis has been one of those. She's really been probably your most consistent scoring threat over the past couple of weeks. Yeah, but you know, Peyton's one of those players that um, you know had a lot of stoppage time in the fall. So when we started playing games, even after Christmas, after the Christmas break, she was still out on protocols and uh, so we knew as soon as she kind of got into practice on a regular basis and really could be around the team and start evolving we knew that she could exponentially get better fairly quickly in a short period of time uh, and that's what we've seen um, but yeah man it's amazing to see her out there playing and really thriving um, her teammates are now starting to learn her kind of style of play how to hit her with the basketball and opportunities where she can score you know and that's that's half the battle you know you're in the tournament. You got Auburn Montgomery coming in next to play at home right here in the field house. And what do you do between now and that tournament? What What is kind of the mindset for this team? You know, again, you know, trying to find opportunities for rest. You know, this is uh, the third or fourth week that we've had three games during the week. So really find an opportunity to come in today. Let's watch some film. Let's learn from our good stuff and our bad stuff. Um, and then let's start preparing for AUM. We certainly don't want to take it for granted, although we're coming off a great win and we've solidified ourselves in the tournament. We really want to finish the season strong. We've got four games left. There's a lot of people in the conference that only got two games left. Um, and I think we can make a big splash if we continue to play well. Coach, good luck the rest of the way. Good luck in the tournament. Thank you. The women are back here in the field house on the home court coming up this weekend. They will host Auburn Montgomery looking to start a winning streak that hopefully carries them on into the postseason. Coming up here next on the program, we'll spend a little time with one of our swimming and diving student athletes to learn a little bit more about what she likes to do both in and out of the pool. Plus, we'll talk about the other spring sports that are going to get into golf and tennis a little bit. That's next on Argo Sports Insider. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. The Florida Lottery is proud to support education by contributing billions of dollars to Florida schools and awarding countless Bright Future scholarships so Florida students can do more than just dream of a brighter future. They can create one. Learn more at FLALottery.com. We've delivered hot, fresh, made-to-order burgers to your table every day since 1950. Now... We're just delivering them a little farther. Right to your front door. Guess you could call them special deliveries. Delivery has arrived at Whataburger. Use our app or order at whataburger.com. For those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Welcome back in for our final segment on this episode of Argo Sports Insider. A lot to get to here, including swimming and diving. They will be competing in the conference championships coming up next week over in Cleveland, Mississippi. Kelsey DeJesus is a diver who has made her way from way up north down here to the Sunshine State in Florida. 
and she is thriving in all this sunshine. The top diver in the conference last year, and we had a chance to spend a little time poolside with Kelsey to get to know her a little better. Hi guys, my name's Kelsey DeJesus. I'm from Watertown, Connecticut. I'm a junior here on the UWF swimming and diving team, but I'm primarily a diver. What brought me to UWF was the environment and how close it was to the beach. Uh, I really love going to the beach and I'm majoring in marine biology, so it's perfect to be right there and be able to go to a bunch of different places for my classes because I do a lot of uh, field trips for my classes, so I really like going out and doing stuff in the field. In Connecticut, the sand is like rocks basically, like little tiny rocks, and the sand here is so soft, it's like confectionery sugar. Um, so I really, it's so calming and the water is so blue and so clear and just so much different from home. So I love it. I also like hanging out with the team and my roommates and just trying to relax. I like to go to church on um, Sundays and Wednesdays and then just throughout the week hang out with them as well. I honestly don't have a set playlist I listen to. I, it kind of depends on my mood in the day and like what meat it is, honestly. Sometimes I'll listen to country, sometimes it's throwbacks. Sometimes I'll even listen, listen to worship music. It kind of just depends like what mood I want to get myself into. I actually wouldn't be in diving if it weren't for my brother. He was uh, diving in high school, going into college when I ended up transferring into diving. And my mom was like, you should try it. I think you'd be really good at it. And so he kind of always pushed me to get better. And it kind of gave us a little competition between each other too, because We'd always see like who could do what dive, if I could like be better than him. But <laughs> I was a former gymnast for, since I was like six, I think. And then I quit in eighth grade. But throughout high school, on top of diving, I did track and field too. I was a pole vaulter and long jumper and triple jumper. I think I'm a pretty good singer, but I don't think most people would. <laughs> um, I don't, honestly, other than that, not really. I'm a really fast eater. So if that's a talent. <laughs> I really like Jersey Mike's and getting a sub. I love sandwiches. So probably like an Italian sub with like spinach, um, olives and pickles. Gotta have the pickles and mayo too. <laughs> Again, swimming and diving in competition conference tournament in Cleveland, Mississippi coming up this week. Our tennis teams had their first tournament canceled because of weather. They were supposed to be up at Valdosta. They'll be at Auburn Montgomery and at Lee to finally get that season started. Their first home matches will take place March 2nd right here on campus, just down the hill a little bit from where we are right now. And our golf team, the women went to the World Golf Invitational, had a strong third place finish for Coach Kristen Dorsey and company. Looking forward to seeing what they can pull off this season. The men, they're in tournament action going on right now as we tape this episode kind of dodging some weather down in St. Augustine, Florida, and looking to get off to a strong start for Coach Steve Fell. That's a look at everything we've got on this episode for you. Tons happening here, as we mentioned, on campus. Of course, GoArgos.com, the Argo Armada app, always the best ways to keep track. You can see schedules, team rosters, all the latest news across our social media platforms as well. We appreciate you spending a little time with us. We'll see you next time on Argo Sports Insider. Go Argos!